We meet today to consider three pending nominations before the committee, Mr. Danny Werfel, Dr. Brent Nyman, and Dr. Rebecca Haffigy. It's going to be a busy morning uh, here in the Senate. Uh, we've heard that from our colleagues, a lot of committees conducting business, and uh, obviously that affects us. The majority and the minority, Senator Cornyn and I have been uh, talking, uh, and we very much appreciate, appreciate Senator Cornyn uh, filling in as ranking member today. Uh, we made an agreement about how we're going to proceed. We'll use the time now to make statements on nominees. I'm going to make a brief statement, followed by Senator Cornyn. Then, should there be any other finance members who wish to make statements, I'm going to stay here for that. At that point, it's my assumption that we will not have a quorum, so we would recess until the next roll call vote on the Senate floor when the committee will reconvene in the president's room off the floor to have the vote. It's my understanding that's acceptable to the majority and the minority. Uh, and uh, I'll now make my uh, short uh, uh, statement, and we'll hear from Senator Cornyn and, uh, and any others that uh, uh, care to speak. A uh, few quick thoughts on the issues uh, that uh, came up during the Werfel uh, hearing and in written questions from Mr. Werfel. Uh, one, Democrats have finally given the IRS the resources it needs to begin to crack down on this flagrant tax cheating by too many wealthy individuals <clears throat> and corporations. After a decade of budget cuts, Republican budget cuts, there's a clear double standard now in tax enforcement. It has gotten a lot easier for rich scoff laws to get away with cheating scot-free, and uh, the burden has shifted onto people of modest means, people without accountants and lawyers looking out for them. We're determined here on the Democratic side to get at that double standard, and I was pleased to hear Mr. Werfel talk about the need to address this issue. He understands the importance of rebalancing the tax code to make it more fair, go after the tax cheating by uh, too many wealthy and big corporations, and to reflect our views on economics give everybody in America, everybody in America, the opportunity to get ahead. Second, the IRS needs to keep working on improving customer service and tech upgrades. There has been progress cutting uh, backlogs and answering uh, phone calls. Uh, these new resources that are aimed at helping the IRS improve service, in my view, are going to make it less likely that a law-abiding family or small business is going to face an audit. Third, it was clear from his testimony that Mr. Werfel will lead the IRS with a focus on maintaining transparency when it comes to tax policy and maintaining confidentiality when it comes to taxpayer data. There's been a discussion of when the strategic operating plan dealing with the new Inflation Reduction Act funding is going to come out. I've been talking to colleagues on both sides here on the Finance Committee, and both sides very much want to see it, and it's important for the American people to see it. Everybody understands how important it is to get this right. We've talked with uh, Mr. Werfel about it, and in his own rules, and I think this was one aspect of what was impressive about him uh, testifying here is Mr. Werfel is a rule follower. He's going to do this job consistent with the law, and he made it clear he's going to work with both sides of this committee. And Senator Cornyn and I and colleagues have been talking about this for years. That has been a kind of trademark of our work here in the Finance Committee. And I think that's a big reason why Mr. Werfel is going to have bipartisan support in the Senate. We understand there's a lot of work ahead for the IRS, and I ought to note that we are right in the middle of the filing season. So I want it understood we're going to do everything we can to move Mr. Werfel's nomination quickly. Next up will be Dr. Brent Nyman. He's been nominated to serve as Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for International Finance. This committee last voted on Dr. Nyman's nomination 15 months ago, November of 2021. It's approved 20 to 8, strongly bipartisan vote. He's up for a key role at Treasury that will have him working on issues that are very important to this committee. Issues including supply chain uh, problems, currency manipulation, and the ongoing fallout from Putin's illegal and brutal war in Ukraine. My view is he's highly qualified for this job. He's a renowned expert in international macroeconomics, finance, and trade. 
<clears throat> at the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. He also served on the staff of the White House Council of Economic Advisors and at the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, and he brings valuable private sector experience. Fifteen months is a heck of a long time to wait, so I hope we can approve this nomination again with bipartisan support. Finally, another nomination back for a second vote uh, here in the Finance Committee is Dr. Rebecca Hafiji. She's been nominated to serve as the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation at the Department of Health and Human Services. That puts her at the heart of the department's efforts to tackle big health and family policy challenges, and uh, we look forward uh, to moving uh, her as soon as possible uh, as well. She's going to be working on some of the committee's biggest priorities in health care when confirmed areas where Democrats and Republicans, again, ought to be able to work uh, together. And Senator Crapo and I uh, were very proud to have led the entire committee, the Finance Committee, Democrats and Republicans, working together on the mental health issues, which, as my seatmate here, um, Senator Cornyn, remembers, the fact that this committee had black letter text ready to go for you and, uh, and Senator Murphy and others who were working on the gun safety bill really paid off because we were able to get those uh, ideas that came from the Finance Committee on a bipartisan basis enacted into law. So Dr. Uh, Hafiji, when she's confirmed, uh, can be another uh, individual who will work with both sides of this committee because she's shown that in her past experience. She's an accomplished health policy researcher who served as the uh, acting assistant secretary since 2021. I hope my colleagues will support her nomination. I hope my colleagues will support all three nominees. And with that, I want to turn it over to Senator uh, Cornyn. And uh, he and I have been talking about these matters on the floor, and I very much appreciate him filling in for Ranking Member Crapo. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd first ask unanimous consent to enter the following statement of Ranking Member Crapo into the record because, as you know, he's unable to be here in attendance. Without objection. Well, thank you for holding the day's markup of uh, Britain. Neiman for serve as Deputy Undersecretary of Treasury for International Finance and Development. Um, Rebecca Hafiji for HHS Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation, and Danny Werfel to be the IRS commissioner. For most, both Mr. Neiman and Ms. Hafiji, the committee considered these nominations last Congress, and as you know, both passed out of the committee by, uh, without any action by the Senate. I opposed their nomination then, and I plan to do so again today. And while I commend Mr. Werfel's willingness to serve as IRS commissioner, I will also oppose his nomination. The IRS likely interacts with more Americans than any other government agency or private sector business. And its mission is to provide, quote, American taxpayers top quality service by helping them understand and meet their tax responsibilities and by applying the tax law with integrity and fairness to all. Unfortunately, the IRS is not meeting its mission. It has a pattern of mismanaging efforts to modernize its in its uh, information systems, and it also has a long history of failing to provide taxpayers with quality service and not fully safeguarding confidential taxpayer information. As a reward, the administration pushed through an $80 billion blank check without producing a single spending plan. That seems to be backwards to <clears throat> me. It seems like we ought to have a plan, and then we ought to figure out how much that plan costs Instead of just saying, here's a blank check for $80 billion, you go figure it out and whatever you do is okay with us. The message is, though, after $80 billion blank check, don't be afraid, taxpayers. Uh, we're from the government and we're here to help. The te Treasury Department is allegedly working on a plan, though they recently missed their own deadline to complete it, not inspiring when it comes to uh, regaining the confidence of the American people. Can you imagine a private business spending $80 billion without first having a plan in place? It's a preposterous idea, but unfortunately it's par for the course here in Washington, D.C. Despite the lack of transparency from Treasury, taxpayers already know what the plan really is. They know from the Congressional Budget Office that the administration's $80 billion blank check means more audits for America's middle-income families and small businesses. 
It means a growing army of IRS agents and auditors without any additional protections for taxpayers. And it will mean more red tape and more bureaucracy for the American people to wade through. While I cannot support Mr. Warfel's nomination, I will acknowledge his background and willingness to serve as the IRS commissioner. If confirmed, Mr. Werfel will face a number of challenges in rebuilding the trust America's tax collector has lost with taxpayer over the, over the years. And I wish him well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, 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 th I thank my colleague. We're going to uh, recognize uh, uh, Senator Tillerson. Just a quick, uh, quick comment, and I'm sure we're going to have lots more uh, discussions about this. The IRS has already started spending on customer service because we're in the middle of the tax uh, season. And I just want to note that they've reported to us that the call waiting time is down very substantially. Uh, evidently, is close to 90 uh, percent. And then, as I stated in my opening um, statement, every member of this committee, Democrats and Republicans, wants to see the full plan as quickly as possible, and we're going to insist on that. And we will continue those discussions. Senator Tillis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I intend to support uh, Mr. Werfel and Mr. Neiman's nominations. I will not be supporting Ms. Hafegees. I, um, uh, I wanted to, uh, I think that in my discussion with Mr. Werfel, he understands there are a lot of structural changes that we need to make with the IRS to make it more constituent focused. Uh, they may be reducing wait times, but they're not reducing my caseload in my office. Uh, uh, constituent work for the IRS is one of the more significant parts of our portfolio. Uh, many times it doesn't make sense, and oftentimes uh, we prevail uh, in the best interest or to the benefit of the constituent. Uh, the IRA and the arbitrary revenue number concerns me, and in many ways similar to what motivated us to do Senate Bill 2155 and regulatory tailoring for banks. I know some of my friends on the other side of the aisle uh, do not support it. We had plenty to get it done on a bipartisan basis, but I think we would do well to look at tailoring. I'm not sure if we need 80,000 more employees, some of them agents, some of them in the back office, um, but I am pretty sure that if you're a small business, I've got a constituent that I spoke with about this who also happens to be my son-in-law, um, who uh, built a business that for the first couple of years was probably around $250,000. He's been blessed. He's grown that business to over a million dollars a year. It's a very simple business, but all of a sudden, he's one of these potential tax cheats that need to be audited without any understanding of the simplicity of his business and the activities that the business is engaged in. Me and my wife would fall underneath the $400,000 mark, so arbitrarily we're not being looked at. I could be playing all kinds of games with tax sheltering and everything else. I could, I could, rise, I could sit at ease. But my son-in-law now has to deal with big IRS coming in and potentially auditing him. I think there's a more tailored approach, but I also believe that that's what happens when we pass things out of this Congress on purely partisan lines. We haven't thought through the most effective way to improve the customer experience, to help the taxpayers who earn that money, that some of it has to come back to the federal government, and I think that the IRA missed the mark. Um, I hope Mr. Werfel is able to sort it out. I hope that he has flexibility to put the resources where he needs them, not where Congress thinks they, they should be. And if we do that, maybe we can soften the blow that I think is otherwise going to occur to hardworking small businesses across America. Thank you. I, I thank my colleague, and as I told him when I heard that he would be on the committee, I look forward very much to working with him, and I think he's going to be a very constructive uh, participant in these efforts to build on our bipartisan tradition. I just want to note one thing as this whole debate has been uh, unfolding. Not 80,000 new employees at the IRS. That's not what is going to be going on. There aren't going to be 80,000 new employees piled on. Most of these uh, positions are replacing retirements and those that are leaving the agency over the next 10 years. So we're going to have plenty of discussions about it, but since this has been referred to 
uh, on so many occasions. I just wanted to note that we are not talking about 80,000 new employees. Mr. Chair, would it, uh, if I may, yeah. uh, With, would it be please. possible for us to figure out what the net number of resources for the IRS after you adjust for attrition, uh, what that number would be? So we can be working from the fact, I accept the face value that it won't be 80,000. But I don't think there's any way that it's just replacing uh, current budgeted positions. So I think that it would be very helpful for us to have a, uh, an assessment. And, and really, the other thing that I'm concerned with is whether or not, and I don't know this uh, in the IRA, if we were prescriptive. For example, if Mr. Werfel wanted to, um, to invest in technology versus people. Uh, or if he wanted people in customer facing customer service roles, what what sort of vision him and, and intent was projected in the IRA that uh, that this committee could have ahead of us to see when it's fully implemented? Here, here's what we'll do. I'll respond briefly to my colleague's question, and then I want to recognize my friend from Texas. Uh, I think that that is a reasonable you know question to raise. We will look uh, already at what we might be able to assemble on this, and certainly that can be something we can pursue as we get the full plan. As I noted in my statement, I think it's clear, because I've talked to a great many of the members on both sides of the aisle, we all want the information about the plan. We want it as quickly as possible, and I intend to work with every you know, member to make sure that this is implemented. We've had a tremendous amount of back and forth on, on these issues. And I think we all understand the need to improve service. We need to deal with automation. We need to deal with the brain drain, the number of people who are retiring. So I think my colleague's point, essentially, is very valid. We'll pursue it with them. And let me recognize uh, our friend from Texas. I'll be brief, Mr. Chairman. I understand your, your um, prediction about how the IRS will conduct its business. Um, but I also understand uh, the senator from North Carolina's trepidation about how the IRS might abuse that power, that, that money that, uh, that it has. And that really makes the point that I think both Senator Tillis and I have tried to make, that uh, we've got this backwards. We've got to have a plan so we know what we're paying for. Um, and unfortunately, in a strictly partisan manner, our our friends across the aisle have uh, written a blank check and said, okay, come up with a plan that, uh, and we have no means by which to, uh, uh, to make sure that it is tailored along the lines that either you uh, have predicted, Mr. Chairman, or to uh, allay the concerns that the Senator Tillis has expressed. So I, I think we've, we've discussed this uh, <laughs> adequately for today. Um, you understand our concerns and we understand your prediction and I guess we'll all have to figure out how this uh, works out later. I, I, I appreciate my colleague and especially appreciate his willingness not to pummel this matter um, any uh, longer. I think we can find common ground on these issues. That's why I thought Senator uh, Tillis's idea was constructive. And uh, um, what Senator Cornyn has essentially said is this topic will go into the to be continued department and so be it. So I'd note that there aren't any other colleagues who wish to be recognized uh, at this point. So unless there is an objection, the committee is going to recess now and reconvene to vote on the nominations during an upcoming vote off the floor. Without objection, it is so ordered, the Senate Finance Committee stands in recess. Thank you, sir.